Hello and welcome back. This is video number three in a series of five on reaching your dream. I'm Kate Bowditch and um, I've been doing this for a while, for uh, doing this work for a while, for uh, almost 20 years, helping people realize what it is they really want and help them move toward it. So we're going to be rather specific today. Today is the day of blocks, learning why you're not already in your dream. What has held you back? What stops you? And something does stop you because you're here and I'm, here we are. So, um, I want to, here we are, we're going to begin with our little self with the sunshine of the dream walking down the path. Well, this is lovely. And so, what happened along the way? What stops us? And as we go through this, this video in particular, um, there are things that can be very painful and very deep that do block you, that are more than we can even deal with right here in this or it can be too confusing, or there are too many of them, whatever it is, uh, do give me a call and uh, let's work something out because you deserve to move forward. You deserve to be freer and to have more of what you truly want. So here we go. Here we are walking along. Our dream is somewhere. We've got it clarified. You know what it looks like. You know where it's going to be. And the first stumbling block, and perhaps for these videos, this is the big one. This is the big daddy. The big daddy stumbling block. Fear. Just plain fear. Boom. There it is. Now. Fear of what? Fear of what? First of all, there's that terrible fear of harm to yourself. I might not make this, right? So we have harm to self. And we're going to come back to that. The other one is harm to other people. happened to uh, Aunt Maisie? I'm her caregiver. Uh, can I leave my can I, can I leave my family and get really internal for a while and really focus on this? How would they feel about that? Um, how would how would my dad feel if I didn't pick up the family tradition? Uh, these are all the fears of abandoning abandoning the family, abandoning your friends. And friends are in this this group. Um, and the other interestingly, um, my father absolutely had no use for any self-improvement stuff. I mean, he didn't even allow Jack LaLanne rubber bands into our house. That was back in the day, you know, you did this and you got strong and buff and all that. Not allowed. And that was, that was just absolutely the worst of the worst. Well, I don't know why he felt that way. I don't know what that was about. But it absolutely marked me that I knew I wasn't supposed to do any of those things that would really set me on my path towards my dream. And I let that shape me. Now, mind you, I became a therapist, which is pretty much that, that bathtub. It took me a long time to get to that spot. And I never once talked about it with my father because he never once asked me about what I do. 
and we just there was that kind of mutual agreement that that wasn't going to be discussed and that's a very sad thing and you you may run into that there is a you're abandoning them they're abandoning you um, and that's a fear and it's a it's a worthy fear um, maybe you're going to do better if you meet your dream if you really reach your dream you might do better than your family has done for a long, long time. So, is that okay? You know? If, and this is certainly a problem in rural areas where, you know, if there have been people in a tradition for several generations that have been okay but not maybe what you want to do is it okay to say no no I'm going to do something else um, it's hard it's it, that's a hard place for them but what's equally hard is they don't see you they don't see the fire in your belly and that's kind of too too bad now back over here to self what are the fears? Shame. I don't, I don't want people to think I'm a nutcase. Or, oh, what if I don't, I don't make it next week? They're going to be ashamed of me for trying. And how weird is that? They love it when you try like mad on the football field. Um, they love it when you, you try in school. But somehow, it's different now. Uh, fear of abandonment. How do you spell it? Abandon. Fear of abandonment. They're going to leave. They're just not going to talk to you anymore. They're going to abandon ship. And there you are, sailing off into the horizon and nothing. So, the other one is a uh, fear of punishment. And um, fear of poverty. And that one and this one are the two biggest hurdles if your spouse is not with you on this. Um, this is their fear. This is their fear. Uh, and so, we just have to sit with that for a minute, and we'll come back to it. There is another whole cone of fear that is worthy of discussing, because that's at the core of it all. You're going to change. You are not ready for your dream yet. You don't know it yet. You're going to become a different person as you pursue your dream. Now that's just the hard cold fact of life. That's why so many people who do win some kind of a big lottery are completely broke within a couple of years. I don't care how much they, they win. They're broke. Because they are not the people who manage big incomes. They manage small incomes. And so they, that money flows out and they go back to a, an income they can manage because they don't have the skill. They didn't change. Change, change, change. You are going to change. You are going to learn more. You're going to stand in your own space in a very different way. You're going to push on something. You're going to fail in that sense. I don't like the word. We'll talk about that. But you're, you're going to find out a certain reality. I think of a, the, the Seahawks. Big, big champions. Oh boy, this is great first game of the season, they go, whooped. And they had to haul back and go, oh, whoops. You know, 
they had some learning to do. It's a, it's a different year. It's a different time. And uh, that's going to be what happens. Your change, however, is exciting. It can be um, kind of like bungee jumping. I mean, you're going to be launching yourself towards a dream. Even if all you can afford is an hour a day to work on it. Maybe two hours a day to work on it. Remember the brain on television. Turn off the television. Walk away from the television. Now. Some family members may call that abandonment, but if that's the only two hours, three hours you have to work on your dream, you need to work on your dream. And this is where inside communication is vital. If you have this two hours while your kids are asleep, wonderful. You know, in the, in the morning or in the afternoon, they're taking naps, they're young. If you have that time to work on your dream during a time when nobody's disturbed, lucky you. That's wonderful. Most of the time, people work on their dreams in the evening, and other family members can feel sort of left out. So it's important in here, in that if that's the issue, that you're going to keep communication up. This is what you're doing, this is what you've accomplished, and you're doing it for the family. You're doing it for the family. Now if you have no family, well then that makes it a lot easier because your time is your own. And um, then you just get to the to where are you going to fit it in? How are you going to do it? Now a lot of us have time for TV and we have time for the gym and we have time to go to work. And if there's no extra time in the day, ditch the TV. Now, I, the TV people are going to be very upset by that because people are really beginning to look at how little is actually on TV. It's violence. It's dark. It's cops and robbers and ERs and bad behaving people. And um, all of the science fiction about the future the future is always terrible. It's bleak, it's gray, it's metallic, it's based on warfare and disaster. That's going in. And that's, that's creating uh, a sense of the way the world is. That's not the way the world is. Oh, of course, there's terrible wars and there's horrible things that happen and landslides and floods and typhoons and boats sinking and all of that sort of thing. But there's also people doing wonderful good works with humanity. There are people building homes and giving microloans and starting up businesses and um, having food drives. And these are the things that are more uplifting. And so if you can turn off all that negative chatter, you make room for your dream. You make room for yourself to build your dream. So, so why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we doing it? Right in here, even before you get to fear, we all have a monkey mind. Now, the monkey mind is beautifully discussed in a book called The Energy of Money. Very simple book that will probably rock your world if you are cour courageous enough to pick it up and do the work. Uh, it's called The Energy of Money and it's a, uh, a book by a woman named Dr. Nimeth. And it, if you go to my website, you'll see in the column of books that Energy of Money is in there. If you're interested, click on that because it's about money and self-worth and how we look at money and we look at ourselves in much the same way. So that's, that's a little lead-in for you for that. 
but she talks about the monkey mind, which has been sort of, it's an idea that's floated around for a while, but her discussion of it is absolutely pin perfect. And the monkey mind creates a barrier for you between you and your fears. Uh, the monkey mind loves the status quo. Now mind you, the monkeys run through the trees, they holler and scream and, and throw bananas or coconuts or whatever, wave the tree branches around every time they sense danger. But, you know, monkeys didn't invent fire. They didn't invent the bow and arrow. They didn't invent the wheel. They're still up in the trees, running around, screaming and yelling and hollering and shaking branches every time they sense fear. So the monkey mind is in here. It's in here, in all of us. And it forms a barrier between you and the fear. And its job is to protect you because it doesn't want you afraid. So the monkey mind says, Oh, you're, you're going to start that uh, online course today. Well, you know, it's, um, you know, it's Easter and uh, you probably would rather die eggs with your children than your children. Or, oh, you were going to uh, start that project. Uh, you're awfully tired. Aren't you tired? Don't you, don't you feel so tired? Uh, monkey mind will have you washing dishes. It will have you sorting paper clips rather than dealing with this and walking through it to your dream. Now, the next um, video, we're going to talk very specifically about how do you deal with these. What can you do? to overcome these these big hurdles. Um, so come back for that, but the shame needs some definite attention and I want to give it some attention right now. When you were very little, you did you weren't toilet totally trained. And there was no shame in that. It just is the way it is. You learn shame when you were older. When you first learned to walk, you sat down a lot, and everybody thought it was cute. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it. They take videos. But if you do it now, they assume you're drunk, or there's something terribly wrong with you. You're supposed to know everything now, and you're supposed to have mastered everything now. And part of change is saying, no, I haven't mastered everything now. I'm going to go ahead and be more. And that brings up fears in other people. And we just have to kind of blow through that. We have to realize that learning in the beginning is about sitting down a lot. It's about falling over. It's about, um, you know, hitting the note flat. My sister, I remember, started to the piano as a child and my grandmother would go Yee! every time there was a note that wasn't right. My mother finally took her out of the room and said, no, this is not going to happen. We, it, we encourage. So, so encourage yourself. Encourage yourself to allow yourself to make mistakes. Allow yourself to have a project that doesn't work the first time. Allow yourself to be successful. You know, yeah, I did that. I did that. I did it all on my own. And that's pretty good. So, the change is exciting. We're going to spend a lot of time on change tomorrow, too. What that's about. This is very real stuff. So, for you, for this next section, we're going to send your monkey mind over to the flagpole. Here's the flagpole. Oops. Running out of room for the flagpole. I'm going to make some room for the flagpole. Okay, there's the flag. And literally and truthfully, your monkey mind likes to be busy. Monkeys love to be busy, 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 busy. So they're going to be busy over here, keeping you from 
this, which is the most important piece. They're going to keep you from that because that's busy. You can, you know, vacuum the rug, you can uh, pick mints off your sweater, you can go visit somebody you haven't seen for probably for a reason, but you're going to go see him now instead of doing what you need to do. So let's give him another busy job. Let's put the peanuts on top of the flagpole and let's tell him. But he's got to go up the flagpole and pick one peanut. And then he's going to come down the flagpole and he's going to bury the peanut in the ground. And when he's done with that, he's going to go back up to the top of the flagpole and he's going to get another peanut. And then he's going to go back down and he's going to bury the peanut. And he's going to go on doing this while you're doing the work you need to do. And this sounds crazy. It sounds like, oh, what is this? But I really would like you to try it. 3 o'clock in the morning, um, when you get the terrible thoughts about all the things that you've been a failure at, if you're like most of the people I know, 3 o'clock in the morning is monkey time, you can really say to the monkey, go to the flagpole, go up and get that peanut, I want you to do that, that's your job, because everything you're telling me is not true. It's not true. And I want to hear it. So your job is to go over there, and I will love you dearly, and you're very sweet little monkey. But you're going to go over there and you're going to run up and down the flagpole. And it, in time, you can actually do that. You can push the monkey off to one side and just say, there's your flagpole. Go do that. And so our monkey is going to be here for a while. Monkey mind is a big, is a big that's a hurdle in and of itself. And so I'm going to ask you this time to make a list of the things that you know that you do instead of working on your project. I know for myself, I always have to check Facebook. Oh, it's very important to check Facebook. And I go to my home and I start reading all the little uplifting things about how I could stay in the now and I could be happy exactly as I am and all those things which are important. But that's the edge of the, of, the, of the path. It's a beautiful place. You can look around, but you've been looking around for a while. We have to take the next step. So, make that list of the things that you do instead of working on yourself, your project. That's all monkey mind stuff. And I would like you to make a list, a very personal list of your, and this is hard to do because this is fears and monkey mind is going to tell you it's not necessary. Yeah, it's just a video, you know, you can just breeze right through that part. Make a list of what you're afraid of. What you're afraid of that stops you, that truly stops you. Uh, for me, I know a big one is shame. Uh, at a certain age, people look at you funny and go, Oh, you're not really. I'm off. Poor thing. That poor thing blows me out of the water. And then I'm, I've learned about that so I can come back in and go, Well, I'll show you poor thing all the way to the bank. Um, so take a list. Shame, poverty, abandonment, punishment. You learned punishment. You learned punishment as a child. This is how little children draw big people. Big, shapeless things with enormous hands. Because you were very little. Well, those days are over. Those days are over. You're all big now. And uh, that Did you notice the little glitch in there? Uh, sometimes your little dreams get interrupted. The little dreams are the dreams that you have and you reach on your way to the big dream. So 
this one got cut off and uh, I didn't know it until I was clear past the fifth one. So I'm back and here we are. Now we left with you making a list of your harm to self the, that you fear. Uh, possibly shame, possibly poverty, possibly alienation of very close family, spouse, support system. And uh, your poverty, you know, how much can you spend? How much can you truly spend to invest in yourself, to m do the thing that creates the change that starts the wheels rolling? Um, and just make a list of that and how that might happen. Um, there's nothing here right now, but let's talk about that change. That first step that first step into change is that first step towards your dream. Uh, and perhaps that first step to change is going to be that you get up earlier, that you stop watching TV, that you that you um, you make a decision. Sometimes that first step is simply the aha, the yes, yes, I can do this if I go slowly and just keep moving a little like a glacier if I have to, like a flash flood when I can. So here you are. Oh, here's our, here's our idea. Whee! There's our dream. And your first step, in fact, is in change. And that is, um, Keeping the monkey on monkey pole. Keeping your monkey over there and make a decision. Just make a decision. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. So, thank you. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what other things you can do in that change, uh, you, you, I would su definitely suggest a lot of reading. Um, and that's something I really want to talk about. If you, if you take 30 minutes a day to read, your first, your first step is to read. Read everything you can about people who change, people who say yes to adventure. And some of these are really old books that are still really valuable. Um, Napoleon Hill is one, um, and uh, a new one, of course, is is the energy of money. I cannot stress enough that you read the energy of money bit by bit. Work yourself through it. Get a friend to work yourself through it with you. Um, extremely exciting. It takes your your mindset and kind of goes. Bah! Very, very interesting stuff. So if you read 30 minutes a day for probably the rest of your life, but definitely in this next couple of weeks, about real people with real thoughts, um, the magic of thinking big, think and grow rich, um, any of the works by people who have leapt up and out. Even even our link letter had some some very interesting things to say. I mean, he was the uh, he he had a, a job. He was raised in the slums. Our, our link letter, for those of you who don't know, was this huge TV personality who was raised in the slums. I think in San Francisco and 
uh, was the first kid to have a, a newspaper route and he had his whole apartment complex, which was basically a slum, but he got everybody buying the newspaper and he delivered the newspaper, collected the money, delivered the money, got the papers, delivered the papers, and he was four years old. And he was the support of his family. So that's worth looking at. Um, so nose around, see what you can find. Find, you go on Google and look up um, success stories from entrepreneurs. And you will find all sorts of things to just to start that engine that says, I can, I can, I'm like them, I can do this, I can do this. So, there you are. Um, now, the next step, of course, is if you're ready to really jump, look at this, at this um, link below. It's katesgame.com, and that will take you to my blog. I have a blog that I write for, and on that blog, what I'm going to, what I'll have is just a, a link for you. You click on that link, and you will go right to the Empower Network uh, information sales page. It's nothing lost. You can sit for 10 minutes and listen to a video, and, and uh, possibly everything gained. Wonderful, wonderful system to start the wheels turning. And they say the same thing too. 30 minutes every day, read something that keeps you towards your dream, that says, yes, you can do this. And um, and I wish you well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.